episode 133 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 17th of September so welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, I have some cross stitch, I have just a little confession. <laughs> I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and a little bit of information on my shop update which is this Friday at 7pm. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles and bag making supplies such as fabric wadding, cord and zips etc. So we have the Craft House Magic Gift Along 2020 going on at the moment and it's basically all the festive gift making that you're doing. It can be knitting, it can be crochet, it can be woodwork, it can be absolutely anything. Love to hear about what you've been making and that's over in the Ravelry group but also if you use the hashtag CHM Gift Along 2020 you can also use that on Instagram as well or I'll draw for prizes from both of those sort of areas as well. So Angela from Knitting on a Farm podcast and Lindsay from Stitch Create Love are doing a collaboration sort of make-along and it's gift themed so you can double dip onto that make-along as well and they're using the hashtag Christmas Gift Smile 2020 on Instagram but they have more details about their make-alongs on their podcast so it's the Knitting on a Farm podcast and Stitch Create Love so I'll leave links in the description bar so you can find those and you can double dip in the two different miles. So I also wanted to mention my friend Caroline who's Let's Just Crochet on Instagram is organising an advent swap but for fabric scraps which I think is a fantastic idea so she's called it the advent scrap fabric swap and she's doing this through Instagram and it's basically swapping your scraps of fabric with other people so that you get that little bit of pleasure from the little cute little bits of fabric that other people have got left over and she's organising that for not just in the UK but internationally as well so do get in touch with her and I will put the link to her Instagram page in the description bar so you can find that. So let's get into the knitting shall we? So first of all I wanted to show you two things that I'd finished already but I've blocked them and I wanted to show you how much they've sort of changed through the blocking process. So this one is my chevron shenanigans shawl I'm showing you the wrong side nearly and it has grown absolutely loads it is so big and cozy it's going to be something that I wear in the house a lot I think to sort of cozy up but also have gorgeous bright colours to cheer me up as well so I'll be wearing it probably around my shoulders like this and it's basically like a big blanket really Ta-da! hopefully you can see that's what it looks like. Adam says I look like Batfink. <laughs> Especially with this side. Bless him. <laughs> so that is going to be something lovely and cosy to wear. So I also thought that I could actually wear it with a shawl pin here. And I think I could wear that out as well. That'd be fun to wear. I think that's a good idea. I'll have to get my shawl pins out and have a play with that. So that's my first thing I wanted to show you. And I have blocked my lovely cowl and this is a beautiful design by lovely Lindsay of Stitch Create Love. I've mentioned her twice now. <laughs> and this is her new cowl pattern. And this pattern is called Dance Like No One's Watching. And it's by Lindsay, who's the Stitch Create Love podcast. Let me try it on for you. So this cowl is knitted with a four ply yarn and a fluffy yarn um, knit double so it comes out really lovely and soft once now that it's been blocked I just love how things drape when they've had that block especially merino anyway so this I did actually knit um, as per instructions with a four, four ply yarn with a um, cereal packer fluffy um, lace weight yarn to make it really nice and soft but you can knit it in DK weight yarn as well but isn't that pretty so it's got ballet dancers or lace that represents ballet dancers on there and it's absolutely gorgeous. Really pleased with how that knitted up. So Lindsay is releasing the pattern this Friday, tomorrow, the 18th of September. So you'll be able to get um, the pattern on Ravelry. 
isn't that gorgeous and I definitely recommend knitting this even if you're quite a, an inexperienced knitter it's very very well written it's a nice sort of simple lace that is relatively easy to follow and I noticed this morning she's put up a video to show you how she casts on for the cowl as well so she holds your hand along the way so there we go I will put a link to the pattern as soon as it goes live on the video but obviously when it's before it's there I can't link it in so as soon as the pattern goes live tomorrow I'll come and amend the show notes in the description bar so I better get on to the proper knitting stuff hadn't I that I've actually done recently <laughs> so I've been knitting on my slumber shawl and this is a shawl pattern by Stephen West and I will pop a picture up the top here to show you what it's going to look like in the end but it's basically a sort of crescent shaped shawl I'd say and it's knitted with, well it's supposed to be knitted with iron weight yarn, but I am knitting it in DK. So this is what it looks like so far. I just love the texture of this. And I'm knitting it in two of my own colourways on DK weight, um, which will make it slightly lighter than what the original pattern was. But I thought DK is plenty thick enough for me for a, a shawl. And this is my DK weight merino and this particular colourway is called Smells Like Teen Spirit and it is like a turquoise colour with speckles of pink and purple and green on there. And I think that's really pretty anyway. I love this lace going up the middle section and there's going to be more of that around the outside which I'm quite excited about. It is knitting up quite quickly. I would say it's a nice easy sort of repetitive pattern um, this bit to memorise. Once I've done a couple of sort of repeats of the, I don't think there was might have been eight rows on the repeat, once I'd done a few of those it was in my head and I was away. So I'm enjoying knitting that, quite relaxing knitting. That's how it looks on the back. So there's some garter stitch and there's also some stocking stitch in there as well so a little bit of a mixture of the two and it's coming quite long already it's bigger than my needles um <laughs> oh dear so there we go let's pull it round straight on this side so it's already that long and i haven't really done that much already so i'm really pleased with how that's coming along See the other colour I'm using is Nothing's Going to Stop Us Now and it's like a, a very pale coral with little speckles of pink and yellow and grey in there. I think that goes nicely with it and it does um, sort of fade from one to the other. There are some similar colours with the spots of colour in there in the two yarns so I thought that that's what will bring them sort of together. Let's hope it turns out what I imagined it to. So there we go. That's my Slumber Shawl by Stephen West. And they're both my own colourways that I'm knitting with. I haven't actually got anything else to show you. Because I am working on a test knit. Which I can't show you um, on the podcast. Because it's a secret. So watch out for that. <laughs> but I have been thinking that I need to... I need to join in with the new Stephen West Cal, which starts in October and it looks like you need five skeins of yarn, two are the same and then three other colours. So I'm trying to look in my stash to pick out ones to use and then I might dye a couple of other colours to go with them um, so that I use some of my stash because I have quite a bit. <laughs> Are you doing the new Stephen West Mal? It's going to be so exciting, I cannot wait. It's basically a mystery knit along. If anyone hasn't done one of Stephen's mystery knit alongs before, you basically have a clue each week and you don't know what you're knitting. It's basically a shawl, but you don't quite know what you're going to be making. Stephen tends to design quite large shawls, so if you're not keen on those, um, perhaps don't think about doing it. But I love big shawls, so I cannot wait to see how it comes out. So let me know in the comments what colourways you're thinking of using for the mystery knit along visit with Stephen West. So the next thing I've got to show you is some cross stitch. Now I have been good and I've been doing 20 minutes every morning before I start whatever I'm going to do during the day and I have got another part of the border finished. So this is how I've got on so far. 
and it's a little bit creased. I will give it a press once I've finished because the Ada is quite large. Um, I have to sort of fold it up quite a lot when I'm stitching on it. So this week, since the last time I showed you, I've finished off this column of acorns and um, oak leaves and I've also completed this entire column of acorns and oak leaves. So this side is slightly different from this side in that there's some golden coloured leaves in with the dark green leaves as well, which I actually really like. I actually prefer that to the other side. I was thinking that maybe it looks a little bit dark, but um, I'm going to leave it as it is for now. What I also did is that I actually took out the two at the bottom there and I'd done it one row too low so I took it out and redid it but I also took it a couple of squares um, over to this side as well so that it balanced it out a little bit more because I didn't think it looked quite right but I'm getting there very slowly I've got another border at the top and the bottom of this and then another border all the way around so it's still going to take me a little bit more time and there's plenty of aid there um, to finish it off I'll give you a quick look at the back I haven't shown you the back for ages I'm trying to keep it as neat as I possibly can so this is a cross stitch by Moira Blackburn and it just says it's a sampler on here this is actually a vintage one that I picked up from a charity shop quite a few years ago and I did start it about three or four years ago it was it was um, obviously secondhand patterns I got it from a charity shop but they have started reprinting it again so I have put in the description bar the link to where you can get it from that I found in the UK anyway so I have the, uh, the top and the bottom to do so I've got this bit here this bit here and then all the way around there's some flowers and some lettering at the bottom and the top or numbers as well I should say um, it actually says um, MB at the bottom just there so I'll obviously change it to my initials and then it says 1989 in the picture um, so I will be putting 2020 in there hopefully I get it finished in 2020 I will do that bit last <laughs> So there we go, that's my cross stitch and I have a little bit of confessions to show you. So these fabrics are both from an Etsy shop, shop called Find Fabrics. I will leave a link in the description bar down below for, to where I got it from. Uh, basically they're both actually a cotton linen mix. This one here is called the Sand colourway, it's just a sort of sandy colour and it's quite a nice quality um, linen that I wanted to use. That actually I wanted to use some for the box that I'm making with the hexagons which I showed on last week's podcast um, but then I also bought this because I wanted to do um, a little bit of sort of applique and some embroidery I've got planned as well so it's a gorgeous blue colour. So I'm going to combine this blue cotton linen with some other linens that I've bought previously to make uh, a piece that's sort of original. I'm trying to make more original embroidery pieces now so that um, I force myself to be a bit more artistic. <laughs> and I have a whole metre of this so there'll be plenty to finish my box that I started and that was the vintage sewing box um, hexagon um, box pattern that else that's that got all the little um, hexagons appliqued on the outside so I thought if I have the same fabric as I did my book in it'll all match nicely so a meter of that so that's all I've bought actually there are a couple of things that are still in the post so there'll definitely be confessions next week so it does look like I've behaved myself a bit better this week <laughs> Oh dear, at least I'm kind of using it all, although I do buy a little bit excessively, you have to be a bit better in next year. I'll behave myself next year. <laughs> So I've got a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread. So Terry was asking, well, where is Adam's knitting? How's he getting on with his socks? So I'll quickly show you that he had finished one sock ages ago. Now, this is possibly two and a half years he started these socks. So at least he's finished one. <laughs> they are knitted from... Uh, Sadar Heart and Soul in a skein of yarn that I got in my stash and he decided that he was going to knit a pair of socks 
and he started these got a bit fed up when he'd finished sock one and, and knitted a hat which i've shown you uh, on an earlier episode of the podcast which i actually haven't blocked yet so i will have to do a little video of how i blocked my hats on that so he got fed up of knitting the socks and switched to knitting a hat and he finished the hat and then did come back to these but didn't get very far so this is how far he's got with his sock he's basically on the foot decreases and he hasn't got far to go before it's just straight knitting but he he just doesn't like the foot decreases at all so what i might do is quickly do them for him because that would take me like half an hour <laughs> and then he can get back to just knitting in the round because he doesn't like pearl and he doesn't like decreasing he tells me but i think he's done pretty well to be honest and he's stolen um one of my little progress keepers there i wonder where that little cookie gone so there we go that's adam's socks terry oh, hopefully um now i've shown him on the podcast it puts a bit of pressure for him to finish them i reckon he should finish them by christmas if with a little bit of encouragement so comment down below adam finished those socks and he'll see all the comments <laughs> and it might encourage him to get them finished so I have a, an, another question from the Ask Me Anything thread and it's from Narwhal21 and they said do you have any tips on buying fabric online? So tip number one is that I'd stick to some manufacturers that have been recommended to me to say that they're relatively good fop quality. So I like for instance the um, art gallery fabrics jerseys because they tend to be really good quality and I tend to buy quite a lot of Lady McElroy as well. So I tend to go for shops that um, I trust sell really good quality fabrics as well. So like Guthrie and Garney, for instance, or Plush Addict, or um, oh, there's a number of shops. If I sit and have a think, and I'll make a little list in the description bar for some of the fabric shops that I really trust for really good quality fabric, I'll pop them in the description bar as well. Um, but it's just a case of sort of trial and error. And I think sometimes places like Tilly and the Buttons, I think they had a list on their website to, to some shops um, that they trust as well for good quality fabrics taking recommendations from people as well I think that's good rather than just picking random ones certain fabrics I think are easier to get a good quality version of so some jerseys I think ones with um, spandex or like her in I think they can be a little bit variable so I tend to stick to uh, manufacturers that I've heard of before so that I know that they're good quality um, or again just stick to those shops that are are generally good quality whatever you get from there it's just a case of um, having a look at the description of what the fabric um, is described as on the website and just learning a bit about the terms that they use and what your preferences are really so it's a bit the case a bit of having a bit of a research really so uh, hopefully that answers your question I do have a couple more um, questions from the ask me anything thread but I'm going to leave those till next week I think and I've just got my shop update to talk to you about next so this week i will have the merino and nylon back in the shop so that's been out of stock for a while just because there's been a problem with the supply chain with my undyed yarn but i think i'm all right now so everything's restocked in every colorway um so you'll be able to get hold of the merino nylon in 100 grams 50 grams and the 20 gram minis as well i am also I've also managed to get another supply of the higher higher needle sets so this is the favorite um, set that this is the set that I've got that she's got the needle sizes that are I think it's from 2.75 up to five millimeter needles and those are the ones I use the most these are the five inch tips that I use the most as well and it comes with all the cables in the back of the different sizes um, that you might need to start you off a needle gauge which is in the shape of a sheep and some little grips so that you can screw your needles onto the cable so this is the needle set that I have but this batch is, is like a greeny color which is quite nice the last sets I've been having or have all been the blue ones but these are like a turquoisey greeny color which I think is lovely so I've got a limited number of these in stock they have been out of stock for a while just because the um, supply chain for the higher higher needles for some particular items has been um, low stock or not in stock at the warehouse as well so as soon as I've seen them back in I've grabbed a few for you guys I know that I've had a couple of requests um, for these in the shop as well 
so this is called the premium plus um, small set of needles which are the five inch sharp tips if you have any requests for different things that higher higher sell because I live literally around the corner from the higher higher warehouse I can I normally place an order sort of once a week so if you drop me an email in that order that week I can perhaps put a special order for you in if there's something in particular that you're after next week as well I'm hoping to get some other um, goodies from higher higher in the shop as well including some tape measures and things so that'll be quite exciting and I'll show you those on the next episode so thank you for sticking right till the end. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!